Hello, welcome back to the next section, Developing Plugins. In this section, we'll be first adding new global functions within the jQuery namespace. Moving on, we'll be adding jQuery object methods that allow us to act on DOM elements. Also, we will be providing flexible method parameters. Finally, we will be creating widget plugins using the jQuery UI widget factory. Now we move on to the first video of this section, adding new global functions. In this video, we are going to first add a function to the jQuery namespace and then add multiple functions. Before proceeding, we will first use the dollar alias. When we write jQuery plugins, we must assume that the jQuery library is loaded. We cannot assume, however, that the dollar dollar alias is available. Recall that the dollar dot no conflict method can relinquish control of this shortcut. To account for this, our plugins should always call jQuery methods using the full jQuery name or internally define dollar themselves. Especially in larger plugins, many developers find that the lack of the dollar shortcut makes the code more difficult to read. To combat this, the shortcut can be locally defined for the scope of the plugin by defining a function and immediately invoking it. This is the syntax for defining and invoking a function at once, often referred to as an immediately invoked function expression, IIFE. The wrapping function takes a single parameter to which we pass the global jQuery object. The parameter is named dollar, so within the function, we can use the dollar alias with no conflicts. Some of the built-in capabilities of jQuery are provided via what we have been calling global functions. As we've seen, these are actually methods of the jQuery object, but practically speaking, they are functions within a jQuery namespace. A prime example of this technique is the $.ajax function. Everything that the $.ajax method does could be accomplished with a regular global function called AJAX, but this approach would leave us open for function name conflicts. By placing the function within the jQuery namespace, we only have to worry about conflicts with other jQuery methods. This jQuery namespace also signals to those who might use the plugin that the jQuery library is required. Many of the global functions provided by the core jQuery library are utility methods, that is, they provide shortcuts for tasks that are frequently needed, but not difficult to do by hand. The array handling functions $.each, $.map, and $.grep are good examples of these. To illustrate the creation of such utility methods, we add two simple functions to their number. Before doing this, you need to create package.json file with these dependencies added. Also, we have created server.js file and add jQuery.js library. To add a function to the jQuery namespace, we can just assign the new functions as a property of the jQuery object. So here we have created a new JavaScript file and add this code. Now, in any code that uses this plugin, we can write $.sum. This will work just like a basic function call, and the code inside the function will be executed. The sum method will accept an array, add the values in the array together, and return the result. Our plugin code comes first in this document. Normally, plugins would appear in separate file names named jQuery.plugin-name.js. But for our examples, it is convenient to place this plugin code in the same JavaScript file as the code that calls it. So, we create a new JavaScript file and add this code for our plugin. This code is quite brief. To compute the sum, we're calling reduce on the array, which simply iterates over each item in the array, adding it to the result. In the preceding code, there are two callback functions that return values. Neither of them has a return statement because they're arrow functions. When we don't include the curly braces, the return value is implicit. To test our plugins, we'll build a simple table with an inventory of groceries. So we create an index.html file and add this code. Here we have linked the stylesheet 
02.css. Next, we create the stylesheet 02.css and add this code for styles. Going back to the index file, you can see that we have added links for jQuery UI CSS file and referred jQuery JS file and jQuery UI JS file. So we need to add dependencies. Start the npm using start command and then run index.html file. Running the local host, we get this result. Now we'll write a short script that populates the appropriate table footer cell with the sum of all quantities. For this, we create a JavaScript file 2.2.js and add this code. This part is for the plugin. And this part is for the populating. So we refer this to our index file and run the HTML page. A look at the rendered HTML page verifies that our plugin is working correctly. If our plugin needs to provide more than one global function, we could declare them independently. Here we'll revise our plugin, adding a function to compute the average of an array of numbers. So let us create another JavaScript file, 2.3.js, and add this code. For convenience and brevity, we're using the $.sum method plugin to assist us in returning the value for $.average method. To decrease the chance of errors, we also check the argument to make sure it is an array before computing the average. Now that a second method is defined, we can call it in the same fashion. So we create yet another JavaScript file named 2.4 and add this code. Refer this in our index file and run it. The average now appears in the third column. We can also employ an alternate syntax in defining our functions using the $.extend function. So we create a new JavaScript file and add this block of code. When called this way, extend method adds or replaces properties of the global jQuery object. Refer to this file in our index.html file and refresh the page. This therefore produces the same results as the previous technique. Our plugin now creates two separate global functions within the jQuery namespace. We risk a different kind of namespace pollution here though. We could still have a conflict with function names defined in other jQuery plugins. To avoid this, it is best to encapsulate all the global functions for a given plugin into a single object. So we create one more JavaScript file and add the code. The pattern essentially creates another namespace for our global functions called jQuery.mathUtils. Though we will still informally call these functions global, they are now methods of the MathUtils object which is itself a property of the global jQuery object. We therefore have to include the plugin name in our function calls. Here we have included math utils average. With this technique and a sufficiently unique plugin name, we are protected from namespace collisions in our global functions. We now have the basics of plugin development in our repertoire. After saving our functions in a file called jQuery.MathUtils.js, we can include this script and use the functions from other scripts on the page. So let us refer this on our index file and refresh the HTML page. You can see that our total and average both are right. So, we've now seen the namespace protection and guaranteed library availability 
that's jQuery plugins grant.